So we left off last time with the data for our stations loaded in. Uh, I was plotting it. <laughs> Actually, it turns out it doesn't take all that long to plot. I just made the silly mistake of leaving out one line. I'll point to it in just a second, but here is a plot of the weather stations that we have. Because this is NOAA data, there's a much denser set of data in the United States, but there are quite a few stations around the globe. Okay, uh, the line that I had left out is the one that actually renders the plot instead of just drawing it. So we, we need that in order for a plot to pop up. Otherwise, you can sit there pretty much forever and just have it do nothing. Okay, so now I want to take these and I want to cluster them. I mentioned earlier that we are going to do this using the k-means clustering algorithm, which over here inside of Spark ML, there is Spark ML clustering, and there is a class called k-means. And so we need to create one of these, and then we need to run it, run our data through it. Now, one of the things about all of the uh, machine learning algorithms that are part of the newer Spark uh, machine learning library, the one that works with data sets and data frames, is that they have these concepts of transformers and estimators, and a transformer will go and convert data from one to another. It kind of takes a data frame and spits out uh, a modified data frame from it. And then there are estimators which can be, they're generally fit to a, uh, a set of data, and the result of the fit is actually a transformer that can then do a transformation. We'll look at the details of that for k-means uh, here in just a second. So, I want to do the k-means clustering, and just to make this clear, I'm going to do this wrong the first time so that you can hopefully <laughs> If you accidentally do these things and you get these error messages, you'll understand. So I'm going to make a new k-means. We want the version from ML. And then we get to set a number of parameters on it. And so all of these uh, different algorithms have parameters that you can set. One of the nice things about the way that uh, Spark ML works is if you aren't certain what you can set on something or what the parameters look like, you can uh, have it tell you what it is. Uh, so See transformations, explain parameter or explain params. And this returns a string. So if I just want to know what are the parameters that I can set for k-means clustering, I can do that. And if we run this, I don't necessarily need to let it go all the way through. But you can see here we get a little printout of the different features that the k-means uh, clustering has. So one of them is k, which is the number of clusters. And I've decided that I am going to use 2,000 clusters for now. We can play with that. It's, it's a parameter that we get to, to set on here. Oh, and it would be nice if, uh, if I could just take and run the data through this. So cluster model. When you fit any of these algorithms to a data set, you get back a model. So our model for our station clusters would be made by calling k-means.fit, and then we pass it the data set that we want, which at least at this point would be stations. Um, okay, how about we just try that? Oh, uh, I'm going to go in this order because it turns out that will fail. Okay. Uh, we have an error here. It is unhappy. And it says field features does not exist. It turns out that the all of these algorithms need the data in a specific format. And one of the things they generally need is they need a certain uh, column 
to be features, and that column generally needs to be a vector. Okay, and it's it's a vector, not a Scala vector, but a Spark vector. So we need to add a column to our data that is a Spark vector. And how do we do that? Well, it turns out that there are a number of built-in transformers uh, in Spark, and one of them is a vector assembler. Okay, so a vector assembler builds a vector for you from other columns. Note that vectors, the uh, Spark vectors, are specifically numeric, and that's what we need for clustering. Clustering is a spatial thing, so, so we need our data to be numeric for this. Um, and so in order to run the clustering, the first thing I have to do is get the data that I want to have used for my clustering into my data frame. So I am going to create a vector assembler for my stations. I'm calling it stations VA. And it is a new vector assembler. And as before, there are things that I can set on here. So I want to set what the input columns are. In this case, I want it, it's an array of strings. So I want the latitude and the longitude to be my inputs. And then I get to tell it what it's going to spit out. So what column to output to. And in this case, I'm going to call it location okay, because that is our location in the world is the latitude and longitude. So that makes a vector assembler. In order to have that vector assembler work on my stations, I am going to do stations with loc. Okay, so I'm making a new data set. Actually, in this case, it'll be a data frame. It'll be a data set of, of row here. And I use that stations vector assembler to transform. So remember, it is a transformer. And it transforms one data set, in this case, stations and produces another. Okay, so now I have a data frame that this spit out, which should have an additional, if I were to show it, so if I were to do uh, stations with loc dot show, when we run this, after it reads in the data, it should print out, and we still have the problem that it's not called features. We'll fix that in just a second. Features is the generic name. We can change the name for that. But here's our data. It has the, the ID, the latitude, longitude, elevation, and name, like we had before. But now it also has a location, which are these. They print out kind of like tuples, except they're brackets. These are the vectors of, of the values that we have. OK, so I'll comment out that line. I'll also comment out the explaining the parameters. Because that wasn't called features, now I could have just said features here, but because I'm going to cluster on this twice, I wanted to use a more informative name. I do need to, I can do a setting here to set the feature column and tell it what name I want to use for that. So I'm going to set it to be location, and now I should be able to run it and not get that error. Okay. Still isn't going to do all that much interesting for us. Uh, Oh, and I'm no longer setting stations. I'm setting stations with loc. OK. Verify that actually does what I want. OK. So this should do a fit. It figures things out in order. And this gives us back a model. It's a k-means model. Uh, in order to actually get the cluster data, we then have to transform our data using that model. And so we'll come back and we'll do that in the next video, and then we'll actually plot out our clusters, and we will have completed our first step in clustering and working with this data.